iPads, yes, they have 3G connectivity. Yeah, they're a mobile device with 3G connectivity. Um, as much as you know about them, yeah, we'll add more and more as we go along. But we're just doing topics one to three. I'm going to grab my lunch and I'll be back in a minute. People come late. Let's grab it. Let's grab it. Let's grab it. Let's grab it. ICTG says the revision is taking place in A13. Um, can anyone tell me what this device would be known as? 
um, this kind of phone. So we have a basic phone, a smartphone, or what do we call this then, please? So it's designed for, for uh, visually impaired or elderly people. This is what we call a specialist device, yeah? This is a specialist device. The kind of features which make it suitable for all people, Nora, what kind of features does this have which makes it suitable for elderly people? Large keys. Large keys? Oh, sorry. Noise, yes. Anything else, Nora? This is Nora. That this is the SOS button, emergency button. That would generally call anyone who you program in as your emergency number. So that might be, say, um, my mum has one, and on her emergency number, it's obviously my dad. Um, it has bigger buttons. You could say it has a simple menu or interface, and also has a louder speaker phone as well, so you can adjust that a bit more. Um, Nora, um, I'll be. In a netbook, what kind of memory is in there? What kind of memory do we have? It doesn't have a hard disk drive. It's not magnetic. It's solid state, yeah. So in our netbook, we have something called solid state. Let me just find my pen. And then why, um, Anna, would we have solid state in there? What are the advantages of having solid state memory in our netbook? Compared to say a disk, a magnetic disk that's spinning around like a normal hard drive in here. It takes up less space. Um, it would be more possible, takes up less space, yeah. Um, Could Zora and Pearl, uh, Zora and Brooke, please come and see Mr. Varner in the courtyard? Um, it might not take up as much room, like in the actual. Well, no, no, but I mean, it might help towards longer battery life. It could prolong battery life, I guess. Um, it's not the main point, though. Um, here? Nora, what's, what else um, happened, do we think? Um, does that mean it compresses stuff? It doesn't mean it compresses stuff, it just means that it's off a load of very small chips. So it's got a load of these tiny chips inside. And because there's no moving parts here, it's If you quicker. like pass the for lunch, there's plenty there and there's no queue. Thank you. It's just designed for the um, chip going on into that. Yeah, it's very basic. So, for example, you probably wouldn't be um, editing video or doing things in like um, Photoshop or any like advanced stuff in there at all. Okay, so our tablet over here then would also have solid state memory. Um, there are a couple of ways in which it could connect to the internet. I am giving one. One way in which our tablet could connect to the internet. Wi Fi. Wi Fi, good. So, it could connect. Um, through Wi-Fi. Another way, please, Nora. Um, 3G. 3G, okay, good. Um, so we could use Wi-Fi or 3G. If we had a 4G phone or another 3G phone, um, what would we need to do in order to um, use the phone connection in order to connect our tablet to the internet? What would we need for that? Uh, USB cable, would that work? Um, I guess, could you use USB? Oh, there's, um, there's um, I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't think, from the mark scheme, that's not what I'm looking for. Because the reason you'd have two mobile devices that you'd want to happen wirelessly, so not really, what would you do? Um, you could set up your phone as a wireless router, yeah? and then you could pair the two devices. <laughs> Okay, so say for example you had a phone and you had a tablet over there, you can use this as a wireless router. Rather than having a separate router, you would use your phone as your internet connection and you would pair the two together. It just needs to be a 3G or preferably a 4G phone. What you could also do then um, with these two devices, if you didn't have, say, a 3G phone or 4G phone, you can also use a USB dongle as well. You're all familiar with like the USB dongle, right? I think I do, yeah. So USB dongle would be fine as well. And when you're using USB dongle with mobile broadband, there are two advantages over Wi-Fi. What are those kind of advantages, please? Um, anywhere, but so you can use Wi-Fi anywhere as well. But it's anywhere with a 3G signal, but what else? Anyway, 3G signal, something else about 
sorry about roll time, which makes it faster than black time. thinking about security, why is mobile broadband more secure? It's encrypted, good. So with mobile broadband, our data is encrypted, okay? So I'll just grab a deck. We're just annotating as much detail as we can around these items. And we've just said that our tablet uses uh, mobile broadband, well it could use mobile broadband, which is encrypted. Uh, and yes, we've said it could use it with a 3G network. Right, um, this camp folder down here, um, Natasha, this is, um, says that it's an HD camp folder. What do we mean by HD? What does it have more of? It has more pixels, good. So this has more pixels, in fact it has 1920 by 1080, it's written there. You can also have 1080 by 720 as well, yeah? No, these are just two different types of high definition. Obviously, the bigger the number, the more pixels, and the more pixels means what I have. More pixels mean the image is clearer. Good, the image is clearer. It doesn't mean the screen is bigger, it just means it's clearer. Higher resolution. higher resolution, that would be good as well. Yeah, higher resolution would be good. Yes. Um, what else do we have? Okay, let's talk about um, the digital SLR compared to the compact camera. What might be reasons for using um, the DSLR version of these? Um, no. um, usually, um, the quality is higher and you get more images and different Okay, good. So the quality is higher and the focus. Can we explain why the quality is higher, Nora Ali, and why um, the focus is better? It has a higher resolution, but something about the chip. It's got a it has a larger chip, a larger sensor. So the sensor is larger, hence a larger resolution. What about zoom as well? So in terms of zoom, what might this have? Optical zoom, good. So it might have a um, greater optical zoom. And then the difference between the two, then you've got optical zoom and digital zoom. Um, which is generally better and why? What's better? Optical. Um, it's not necessarily lasers, it uses a lens. So the lens actually shifts like a telescope or like your pair of glasses. Whereas digital zoom is just like enlarging a larger picture. There's no real zoom going on there. Yeah. Okay, we'll go on to topic two now. So that's the second slide. Um, we're, yeah, yeah. And we're just annotating with as much as possible. Um, let's start with Wi-Fi. Natasha, what do you mean when you say Wi-Fi? Um, access to that app. Wireless. Wireless, okay. Wi-Fi is about wireless internet um, access. And then linking to that, we've got our wireless quality. And I prefer if you use different. Yeah. So in terms of wireless quality, there are three things which affect wireless quality. What are these three things? We're just annotating slides to you. Anna, number one. Good. Number one, physical obstructions might affect the wireless quality. Um, that might be, say for example you're at a concert in the roundhouse and they have loads of those circular pillars. If the signal hits a pillar, it's wireless, it wouldn't be able to broadcast a physical pillar. Or it might just be a corner in a room and therefore there's like a literal wall that you can't go around. So physical obstruction would be one. Um, Natasha, what else might affect the wireless quality? Um, not inter interface, you're almost there. It starts with int. It's like a disturbance, it's into what? Hello. Interference, good. So you might have interference with other signals. And then lastly, um, what's the last one, Nora? Distance, thank you. So distance between your um, device and the receiver. The further away you get the signal, the wireless um, signal might get slightly weaker. In terms of um, USB though. So USB usually attaches um, 
devices to our computer. What they call these devices are on the outside of the computer. Peripherals, good. Not to be confused with peripherals. So we've got like peripherals on the outside. And then how might USB 3 um, be more advanced than USB 2? What might it offer? Um, not necessarily higher storage capacity, it's not to capacity, it's something else. Higher what? Speed, yeah. So you've got USB, USB 2, USB 3 as well. How do you do that? Okay, good. Um, other things that we have here then. We've got a load of wireless devices here. Um, let's assume we've got a modem um, to connect to the internet. What else would we need in order to connect wirelessly? We have a modem at home, it's plugged into the wall. What else do we need? Attach it. Router, good. So this here is our wireless router, and also you've got the wireless adapters on our laptop there as well. Um, HDMI, Ella, what's that used for, please? HDMI. Good, so it's for high definition signals to connect, say, a TV to your computer, or it might be like audio devices as well. So it's high definition video or audio would be using HDMI. On to um, the satellite navigation. What kind of technology allows us to do satellite navigation, please, Anna? Uh, GPS, good. Um, and then what, if you're asked, what does GPS actually do? What does GPS do on its own, without the satellite navigation? All right, then, what do you do? Okay, good. So um, it gives, GPS gives you your current location. GPS does not plan out a route for you. The satellite navigation does. So GPS just gives you your current location. Good. And then things that might affect your GPS signal are similar to the wireless one. So Natasha, if you go under a tunnel, yeah, you're going to lose connection because that's coming through the satellite as well. Good. Thunderbolt, which you may need to know, and this you sometimes use it to connect external hard drives, um, and also you can use it to connect, I think, um, HD devices as well. But it's mainly for high-speed data transfer. Um, whilst we're on the topic of connectivity, if we talk about um, connectivity and we're playing online games, ideally, what do we want in terms of bandwidth? Do we, what kind of bandwidth do we want? Ella? A wide or high bandwidth, yeah? So we want high bandwidth. We're just um, annotating each of these things around, but we're going to move on to topic three quite soon. So we've talked about online gaming here, and we're saying that for ideal online gaming, we want high bandwidth, and we want low what? Low latency. Now, can someone um, up from Nora explain to me what we mean by low latency? What's that about, low latency? Ella. Okay, good. So, as you just said, latency is a lag between data being sent and data being received, yeah? In terms of gaming or in terms of video, that would cause buffering or it might cause a delay. So, time between the two, if you've got a really high latency, then your network's going to be, or the images that you're watching, aren't going to be very clear at all. Um, I think that's basically things covered on here. Firewire. You may need to know it's another way of connecting, say, a digital camcorder, which would be something like this, to your computer. And it's quicker than USB, so that's why um, some people would use FireWire, and more advanced than FireWire is Thunderbolt um, as well. But the quickest ones on here in the middle USB 3, FireWire, and Thunderbolt. Okay. Thunderbolt is generally used by external hard drives. So say if you're editing a huge amount of film, and you want to transfer the data quick, quickly, you use Thunderbolt. It's something invented by Mac. I don't think many things use it at the moment. 
No, it's a type of cable. This is a type of cable. All of these are types of cables or connectivity, both wireless and wired as well. Okay. Right. Uh, topic three, which is staying safe and operating no, no, no. online. So, you should have topic three. Topic three on the back. Okay, good. Um, is this up here where you have these jumbled letters? What do we call this, please? This is, yeah, a capture, or uh, you might call it a challenge test, sometimes we call it a capture, sometimes we call it a challenge test. Why does this exist, Diana? Why do we even need this, and where does it come up? It's to check that you're not a robot. Yeah, it's checking you're not a robot, checking that you're actually a real person. Sorry, I only remember your surname. I can't remember if you had Kavanagh, right? What's your first name? Um, Rebecca. Rebecca. Right, okay, Rebecca. Um, when we say remember password, our passwords are remembered in these small text files. You know what they're called? Cookies. Cookies, good. Yeah, when you remember your password, this is uh, remembered in cookies. So they're small text files. Um, they're encrypted so other people can't read it. What do we mean by encryption? So encryption um, occurs generally when we've got um, cookies, but also when we have this padlock. This is a um, symbol for something being encrypted. Rebecca, yeah. Is it when like there's like this page that's just like those random words, so like no one knows that. Okay, good. So you take your piece of data, you put it into random code, and the things that you need to remember here. Just remember there's a lock, so in order to open the lock, in order to unlock the data, you need a key. Yeah? So with encryption, you need it's encrypted using a key, and only the person at the other end will have um, access to that data. So things that are encrypted are any websites with a secure symbol, also mobile broadband is encrypted, and Bluetooth is encrypted as well. Bluetooth you might know as having, I think the symbol is like this. Well, there's like a crossover back here as well. I think it's something like that. But like Bluetooth is, um, actually someone explain to me what Bluetooth is, please. Uh, Nora, what's Bluetooth for? Um, it's like, it's a bit like Wi-Fi, but um, a smaller kind of version of Wi-Fi. Okay, so it's a shorter range. What would be even shorter range than Bluetooth? Infrared, good. And then the disadvantage of infrared, apart from being a short range as well. Yep, and also, good, it has to be in the line of sight. So it has to be in a direct line where Bluetooth can go around corners, it can go through walls as well, because it doesn't really work on line of sight. Okay, so we've got a capture. Right, this number at the bottom here, um, what's this called, please? This thing here, the bottom of a credit card. It's actually it's CCV. So this is your CCV code. Thank you, Alice. Is that done? Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's fine. I'll just sort that. So that's the CCV number. And this is in order to add another level of security so that your card isn't easily copied. What is it called when a card is copied? Credit card what? Skimming, yeah. So it's to prevent skimming, yeah. So CCV numbers will prevent skimming, and skimming is where you have a device that effectively clones or copies your card, right? So CCV will prevent that. Um, other things, so this is just generally being online as well. PayPal is an example of um, what, please, Ella? Okay, you can pay by money online um, to a company or you can do it to someone else. What would be the advantages of this though? So, why don't people just use a credit card, Dana? Um, because if, once you have a login, you don't need to type in your card details every time. Good, good. So, you don't have to type in every time. It's key to remember that this, sometimes the example I refer to it as a third party payment system. 
Because obviously in a transaction, when you're buying something, there are generally two parties. There's you, the buyer, and there's the seller. But in this case, there's someone else facilitating, helping out there. So we call that third party, Noah. Um, you know how people usually say that PayPal is safer? Uh -huh. How is it safer if it's third party? Um, because you need an HTTPS login. You don't have to get your card out all the time. So as you're getting your card out, if you're doing it at a public place, that can be quite dangerous. And also, PayPal kind of protect your phone. So if you shop online on eBay and you use PayPal and some fraud happens, PayPal will kind of refund the transaction. So they kind of help you out there. But the disadvantage is that PayPal will charge you a small fee if you use it. So if, say, for example, you're selling a t-shirt for £20 and you let your customers use PayPal, PayPal might take 5%. So, yeah, they might take a bit of money out of that. That would be what? Well. Sometimes they do that, sometimes they charge you more. Some companies have wisened up. they charge like, more like, you know, our school uses? Mm. Parent pay. pay. Yeah. Does the school have to pay parent pay? Possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't pay but the school. The school does. And the advantages of it is, though, is that the school, obviously, they don't want to employ five people taking checks, counting cash. I mean, it's really dangerous having cash in school because it makes the school that target of theft. Whereas with PayPal and ParentPay, the money doesn't exist anywhere but online, so that's kind of like the benefits of that. And the last thing is here, HTTPS, the S stands for what I mean. Okay, it's reliable. It means it's secure, yeah? So if you have HTTPS, it means it's secure, and the padlock means it's encrypted. And we remember that you would need a key to open the, um, to kind of decode or decrypt the data. How are we doing for time? I don't know if anyone has any questions about topics one to three, because I was thinking of covering topics four to six um, at breakfast tomorrow, or actually at uh, um, period six. So, so what do we think? Yeah. I, I just wonder, like, what, what are all the different types of GPS? And then Nora, I'll answer your question as well. Okay, um, so all the G's, I guess, we'll cover to start with. Okay. So, under GPS, Nora, I'll answer your point in a moment. We have, say, geotagging. That is like on Facebook where you take a photo and tell you where it's right. taken. This is just random. If you turn over from topic six to the blank page, you can write on there. So these are all the G ones, which are a bit confusing. So you have GPS, so there's that ge geotagging, um, which is where you tag photos, locations, and if it's, this is like A star now, um, the type of data that you're adding is called metadata. So every single time you take a photo, there'll be extra data attached to it. So say, for example, if I just go to Mr. Sandy's photo stuff, which would be where in Where would he say it was the top of the stuff? Uh, oh, yeah, Yeah? No, the top photography. Yeah. Right, so let's have a look at some of the photos that uh, have been taken in VTEC. Right, so let's have a look at this uh, picture. Let's hold the picture. So. I need a photo she's taken so Ah, these ones, perfect. So say for example we have a look at this image and we look at the properties of this image. In here, you'll see that there's loads of extra data, so I'll tell you the camera it was taken with, uh, the shutter speed, the aperture, the length of the lens, the F number, but if there was some geotagging data as well, we'd also add where it was taken. And all of this extra data is called metadata. That might come up on your exam, but it's only like literally a one mark thing. It's effectively extra data about the file. Yep. And does the digital camera actually store the metadata on the camera? On the memory card, on the photo, yeah. 
because if the camera has GPS, which our Blackberries do as well, you can geotag everything. Obviously, that poses certain risks because people can stalk you or realize where you are, where you're updating your post, etc. So there's geotagging, GPS, and that kind of links to sat nav. So obviously, GPS is used for sat nav. Then other things, though, the other Gs that we kind of sometimes get confused about uh, would be 3G. Let's start with 3G. And let's go to 4G. Geotagging. Isn't yeah. there tracking as well? You can track using GPS, but it's okay. not really geo tracking, I don't think. I don't think that's a term. Right, okay, so 3G, as we covered on um, slide number, this is slide here, when we talked about these mobile devices like a phone and a tablet having 3G. That is what we call a um, third generation of mobile devices, so third generation of wireless. We're actually running towards the end of our session, Rebecca, but you take notes on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So 3G is what we call third generation mobile wireless. Yeah. It's pretty quick, right? At 3G, you can uh, access the internet quite easily. You may be able to watch a YouTube video and stuff like that. At 4G, over here, it's even quicker. Um, so for example, Samsung Galaxy 3S, that would be 4G, um, or HSPA maybe. And that means actually you can use your mobile phone as a um, router. You can set up your mobile phone as a router, and you can connect that with different devices as well. Before 3G, we have, say, 2G, Edge. So we did kind of like a timeline. Before this is like GSM as well. GSM is very, very basic. Um, you're just doing calls and texts at this point. You all know that when you've got the E on your mobile phone or Edge on your mobile phone, that means it's slightly slower. If it ever drops down to GPRS, you know that it takes forever just to load an email, right? So this is getting slower as we connect, yeah? So this is like, um, get slower and slower and slower as we go along that way. And faster, i.e. more bandwidth as we go towards this end. So greater bandwidth. Bandwidth is generally measured in like um, megabytes or megabits or gigabits per second. So over here, you're getting a higher number of megabytes per second. Yep. The other Gs. So we've got a GPS, 3G, 4G. And we've got GPRS, I think that's it. I don't really want to confuse you any further. Um, Nora, I think you had a point as well. Um, I can't remember it. But oh, yeah, but can you tell us um, the difference between LAN and LAN? Yeah, I don't think you need to know this for your exam, but I can tell you the difference. So, LAN and WAN. I'm semi sure this isn't on the exam, but I'll tell you anyway. A LAN is a local network in one building, so local. L stands for local. A WAN is wide, which means it crosses several buildings. So the internet is an example of a WAN because it goes across several buildings. What we actually have at Marlebone would be considered a WAN because when we're at Blandford Street, we can still access it. Say, for example, if the internet, if our network was connected just as one route, it would be LAN. But as we can go to Blandford Street, it goes across buildings, then it's a WAN as well. Any other queries or any other topics which are quite tricky? So, Rebecca, sorry, go ahead. Okay, um, I was going to say, I always forget about the three different things. Okay. This one's a tricky one as well. So, this was a lesson that was covered by um, Miss Joseph? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I might just actually get her slides up because she explains it a lot better than me. But you can you kind of have like two separate kinds of software. You have local and you have hosting. Local means it's stored on the device. That's all it means. Hosted means it's stored on the internet. 
online. And it's also known as... This is where we're getting confused. Open source can be both. You can get free software that's either stored locally, or you can get open source software which is online as well. So it's not necessarily open source. In hosted computing, we might have cloud computing. Or we might have SaaS, a software as a service. So these three terms, they mean exactly the same. It means the software is offered online and it's hosted online. It's not locally. Generally, in local software, you could also say that most local a lot of local software um, is proprietary. So it can either be proprietary, I'll spell, or it can be open source. What's proprietary? Whereas most stuff that is hosted is generally open source or free. Or freeware. Right. Proprietary is things like Microsoft Office. You pay for it. The word proprietor means it has an owner. Someone pays for it, you pay the owner for it, right? At the same time, you can also get open source, which is local as well. So Firefox, that is local. VLC is local, but it's free. Yeah? Most of the stuff that's online is open source. There's a few pieces of software online that you pay for. I'm just trying to think of ones which you have, like, for, say for example you have um, a WordPress, then maybe there's like a license where you actually have to pay for it, but most of the stuff online is open source, not all of it though, yeah? Uh, but the main thing is if they say cloud, SaaS or hosted, it means all online. Open source means it's free, and also it means the code is available for anyone to edit, but that can be both online and it can be on your computer locally as well. Does that make sense now? That makes, I hope that makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, is it just Rebecca and Ella who are in year 11? And Nora. And Nora, okay, cool. So the three of you, if you're around, then period six, I'm going to go through topics four, five, and six. If you're not hanging around, I'm repeating that session at breakfast. So all you attend, you're just going to have to go to the breakfast session, which is in round one. So G1 in Blanford, that will from 7.45. So 7.45 to 8.15, about half an hour before the exam. Um, Do we all have the same time? Huh? Is our exam the same time? Theirs isn't, yes. but the revision session I'll run at Blanford, because you've got to be there at 8.30 anyway, right, for the start. So if you come in at 7.45 to 8.15, I'll run that session over breakfast. If you come early enough, I'll provide breakfast. If you're not there, then all the breakfast might be gone. Well, G1, G1. Yeah. And what, what can we get in? Uh, period 6. Period 6, uh, A11. Just next door there. Yeah. A11. Okay. So three of you could come in A11 rather than at breakfast. We'll just be next door. Okay. Oh, thanks for coming, guys. I hope it was useful. Yeah. I know it's, it is slightly early. Period one and two, you already have a um, session. This is going to be a Yeah, you are a bit. I mean, what I could do, no worries, thank you. What I could do, I could record it, because I recorded this session. So I could record the breakfast session and put it on the computers, and then maybe in your class you could say there's a, a repeat of the session, or you just watch that video, and then we can put it on, and then you can take notes and stuff. So maybe we do that. I'll try and get it on as soon as the breakfast session is finished. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe if you don't think, because if you live far away, then it might not be a good idea. If you live near enough. Yeah. Alright, see you later, ladies. Where do you leave at seven? Yeah, well, thereabouts.